In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. He was in the world, and though the world was made through Him, the world did not recognize Him. He came to which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all those who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children not born of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor of husband's will, but born of God. 
The word became flesh and he made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son himself who is God and is in the closest relationship with the Father has made him known. arrived. Happy Christmas. But isn't it so incredibly busy at this time of the year? I don't know about you, but I'm a, a list sort of a person. I can't cope with a without a list of or two or three. So I'll have a list of who to send cards to, a list for presents, a list for food, a uh, list of places I've got to go and people I've got to see, a, a list of other things I've got to do. And then I take great pleasure in crossing things off as I've done them. I bet it was busy in Bethlehem at that first Christmas. So in Luke chapter 2 verse 1 we read that Caesar Augustus called for a census. And the Roman census was an aid for um, military conscriptions and an aid for collecting taxes. Now, the Jews weren't required to fight in the Roman army, but they couldn't avoid paying the taxes. So everyone was included in the census. So... I bet they had lots of lists, maybe, at that time too. So people who had to travel to the place where they were born will have their packing lists, maybe 
toothbrush, spare socks, snacks for the journey and probably several other things. And the people who lived in the town where they were born, they'll have lists as well because maybe they'll have family and friends coming to stay with them at this time. Um, they've got to clean the spare room, they've got to put fresh bedding on, they've got to get some extra food in. And then maybe they might want to take advantage of the fact that everybody wants to come to their town. So they'll get the family to squash in one room and maybe they're going to let a room out on Airbnb. So they've got to get that ad advertised as well. It was busy. So Mary and Joseph had to travel to Bethlehem for the census because that's where Joseph was born. They were currently in Nazareth. So the journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem was about 70 or 80 miles. So if they went the direct route, that would have been about 70 miles. But that would have taken them through Samaria. And the Jews and the Samaritans famously didn't get on. So I would guess they'd have taken a longer route to skirt around the edge of Samaria. So it's probably a journey of about 80 miles. Now I understand that that was probably about four days journey, walking for about eight hours a day. But we've got to remember that Mary was heavily pregnant at this time. So I'm guessing she's not going to want to do eight hours walking for four days running. So I guess that maybe we're looking at a journey of about seven to ten days to get to Bethlehem. And then you can imagine, can't you, when they arrived there, let's imagine how it might go. Mary would say to Joseph, oh, where did you book us in then to stay? Joseph turns and looks and says, hang on a minute, you were supposed to be doing the booking. Mary looks at, no, no, I thought it was you doing the booking. Joseph says, no, I thought it was you. Turns out neither have booked anywhere to stay. So they start knocking on doors, seeing if they can find somewhere to stay while they're in Bethlehem. So I knock on the first door, maybe. Uh, hello, you got room for night? Yes, yes, sir. What name did you book under? And I say, oh, well, we haven't booked. Uh, no chance, sorry, we fall. And it's the same story everywhere they go. At this time, perhaps it's getting dark. They're starting to panic. They've got nowhere to stay. This baby's going to be coming at any time. And they eventually find somewhere that they can sleep for the night in a stable. We read in Luke chapter 2 verse 7 that the baby was born and placed in a manger. So it's from this that we deduce that they've been staying in a stable. Now when we imagine a stable, perhaps on a farm or something, we imagine perhaps a brick-built building, corrugated iron roof, or maybe a wooden structure, straw on the floor. It really wasn't like that. A stable at that time was a cave. And the manger, the feeding trough for the animals, was carved out of the side of the cave. It was a dirty, dark place, just somewhere for the animals to shelter. This is where Mary and Joseph stayed. Now, apart from the shepherds who were outside town looking after the sheep, everyone just continued with their busy, busy lives. They were so wrapped up in their day-to-day -day living that they missed Jesus. Can you imagine the greatest, most significant event of all time? And they missed it. That was so close and they missed it. So why? What well, in their busyness? I miss Jesus. 
But why? How on earth could that have happened? Perhaps it was because it was just not within their expectations of how this new king was going to arrive. They knew from their scriptures that God was going to send a new king. But when you think king, you think royalty. And our equivalent for today's day would be that it's covered in news stories. There'll be announcements on the palace gates. That's the sort of thing they were expecting at that time. But no, our God decided to be born in a dirty, dark stable. Their scriptures prophesied the coming of this great king. But it didn't happen the way that they expected. So what can we learn about this story? What can we learn from the people in Bethlehem? Number one. Let's not miss Jesus in the busyness of our lives. The King of Kings was amongst them. And I missed it. Please let's not us miss it. Secondly, let's not miss Jesus because what he's doing doesn't fit in with what we're expecting. Our king chose to be born in a stable, not what the people were expecting. How is he going to live and work amongst us today that's outside our expectations? Let's not miss him. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the Christmas season. But don't be too busy for Jesus. And don't limit him to our expectations. Have a great day. Well, I do hope you enjoyed the message from Elaine this morning. A brilliant message. And it brings us back to, to the reason why we have this season called Christmas. And um, it's, it's because of Jesus. Know the name and don't miss it enjoy your day enjoy your time with your family enjoy the time opening your presence but let's not miss the reason why we pause and why we have this family time together let's keep jesus at the center now today and moving forward into 2024 let's keep jesus at the center of our lives and let's just have time today to just give him thanks and rejoice. So God bless you, church. Just a quick notice. Just remember there's no meeting at Legacy on the 31st, but there will be an online service that will commence at 11 a.m. And you can access that online. And Pastor Danny DeLong is gonna be bringing that message for us, the last message of 2023. And then the week after, we're back at Legacy, meeting at half nine for prayer. Please come and join us. It's a commencement of our 21 days of prayer and fasting. All the information about that you will receive. And, you know, let's just, let's just get before the Lord. Let's get praying. Let's get seeking God. And let's see what he's going to do with the Legacy Church and with your individual life in 2024. I look forward to seeing you on the 7th. Come and join us as we celebrate this new year as we should do. And that being giving God thanks for everything that he's done for us. So God bless you all and enjoy the rest of your day. See you soon.